What's going on guys? Today's video is actually a highlight from my recent 40 minute skeleton visual effects mega tutorial. Link to that will be down in the description. I just figured highlight videos like this are easier to watch for people that are specifically just trying to search for this one thing. So hope you enjoy. New tutorial will be out in about two days. Have a nice week guys and I'll talk to you later footage it's pretty easy within cinema 4d you just go up to the motion tracker tab and you're going to go to motion tracker now in your object menu select this and you're going to see this footage settings under the footage tab click these three dots to load in your footage so here is the clip that i was using for this i'm going to go ahead and open that up and you'll see that there's a lot of footage here we want to trim this down to the part that we like so i'm going to trim it to around here so from the 360 frame mark to around the 418 frame mark so in the bottom right here, you're going to see frame start. Let's start that at around 364. So I'll set it to 364 and then I want it to stop around. So we'll put that to frame stop 418. Let's do the same on the timeline. So we're only seeing that selected area. So in the far left here, we're going to set that to 364. On the far right here, we're going to set that to 418. 18. Now, as we scroll through here, we've only selected the targeted area that we would like to track. So we're ready to start going. Let's click on the motion tracker again. And what we're going to do here, you'll see this resampling. This is basically your quality. We're going to want to crank that up so that it's sharp. It's a sharper image, which is going to be easier when it comes to um, finding those track points. So once you have done that, we can click over to 2D tracking this tab right here, and we can go ahead and click manual tracking. This is auto tracking. If you want to create kind of like a 3d camera solve like in after effects we're going to go to manual tracking and we're going to go ahead and start adding these in so you'll see i have all these dots on my face if i hold down control on my keyboard i can just click on each of those dots and make sure you're not using the selector tool it won't work so i'll go to this movement tool hold down control click and you'll see that it creates this little marker and I can resize this if I wanted to I can make this a smaller little area here and I'm just going to add these onto all of the little track markers which I've added to my face. I'm going to do the head by itself and then I'm going to do the hands separately and I recommend you do this as well just so things don't get confusing. So we'll start with the face here. We're going to start at our beginning position click on our motion tracker and you'll see now you have each of these little track points in this little user track area. You can go ahead and just shift click to select all of them and just click this manual track button and it's going to do the work for you and start to track the motion. So now if we play through here, you're going to see these little lines which are replicating the motion um, that these trackers are taking place. So as you can see, we got a pretty good result out of here. This one kind of this one kind of throws off for a second because my hand goes in front of it, but that's fine. So what you guys are going to need to do is make sure that you're tracking at least 8 to 12 markers. And this is very important because if you have under that, it's not going to let you take the next step. The button that you have to click next is going to be grayed out. So I'm just going to add a so I'm just going to add a few more trackers. I'm going to click off here and let's go ahead and maybe just track the eyes. So I'll click like here, I'll track the nose, and then I'll hold control, select those new ones that I made, and then again, manual track them once more. That should be good for us for now. We could always go back and add another one if we need to. So holding down shift, I'm gonna select all of these. If you have any leftovers, hold down control and just click those two. So you're selecting all of your user track. So you're selecting all of your track marks. We're going to go back up to the motion tracker tab in the top left and I'm going to click object tracker. Once you have your object tracker up, we're going to go and where it says assign selected, click that and it's going to paste all of those track markers into the assigned tracks part. Next, you go to reconstruction and this is going to be grayed out if you don't have enough track marks. So make sure you have at least eight track marks for this to actually be showing up. Click this button and the computer is going to go ahead and run the 3D solve. You'll see in the bottom left, it's running perfectly fine. And this was pretty quick. So you'll see if we drag here, we now have these keyframes on the timeline. So now what we need to do is we need to take this object tracker and we need to connect it to a null object, kind of like how we do with After Effects, where we paste all of the motion keyframes into a null. So to do that, just click and hold on this little square object and create a null. And now, as you see, when I created the null and we're clicked and we're clicked off the object tracker, you're going to see all of these different colors on the trackers. So if we open up the object tracker object here and you open up user features, you're going to see some of these are green, some of them are red, some of them are kind of like purple. Green means that it's a good track. Red means that it's a poor track. So you can use that as a little reference. Either way, let's connect the null to the object tracker. I'm just gonna click and drag down. So what we need to do now is I'm just going to select the null. I'm gonna go up to my tags tab in the top right here. I'm gonna go over to character tags and I'm going to create a constraint. 
So select that constraint. So clicking on this constraint tag here, what we need to do is we want to constrain the position scale and rotation. So select that and you now have this little tab here. We can go here and you see this target. So the target of this is going to be our user features, which is a child of the object tracker. And we're gonna select this user features and drag this into the target layer. So let me bring that up again, click on the constraint, the PSR tag, click, drag that into target. So now make sure you're just in the model mode, make sure you're not on the selector tool and you're just on a move tool. Go ahead and click on the null in your object bin here. And if we drag, you're gonna see that the null is following the movements that we tracked on my face, as you can see. So now we can bring in any object and we can link it to that null, which is containing our track info. So for example, I'll click and we'll just make a cube. Just take this cube and make sure it's a child of the null. So pointing down arrow, double click to reset it, select it, shift C, PSR reset position scale rotation double click that and if we click away there you go so I'm gonna go ahead and just take the z-axis of this cube but you'll see it's following the motion of my face this cube is kind of just our reference let's go ahead and file merge objects and let's bring in an actual skull model so I'll go to overlays and elements and I have my 3d starter pack here so we're going to go to objects here here's my skull and we'll do the same exact thing take this mesh, which I'm going to rename to skull, click and drag it so it's a child of my null here, and we'll turn the cube off. And again, select the skull, shift C, type PSR, reset your position scale rotation. And there you go, just a few minor adjustments here, and you're basically working in the exact same setup as um, After Effects, where we had the After Effects tracked over our face. And now you can make those tiny adjustments with the rotation. You can, you can create some different materials to lower the opacity to line things up better. Once you're done, if depending on what renderer you're using, if you're using Cinema 4D Octane, you can change your settings, but you just click this little render settings button here, make sure, change your render to whatever you're, you are using. So standard, turn on the alpha channel and then turn off all the backgrounds and then just render out the pieces that you need and bring them back in After Effects and then repeat the steps that we showed you earlier in the tutorial in the tutorial to composite it all. I hope you guys did enjoy this. I hope that it taught you guys a lot of useful stuff. We're starting to bring more 3D in, but at the same time, we're sticking close to those roots and we're still trying to bring you guys the newest tips and tricks in After Effects, Adobe Premiere, anything that can help you guys create the things that you wanna create. If you guys did enjoy this video, please leave a like on it. It helps a huge amount. Subscribe if you wanna see more stuff like this. Turn on that bell notification to never miss a tutorial. As always, guys, thank you so much for the support. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.